Thankfully, most motorcycle crashes don't happen at high speeds. High speeds and motorcycle crashes are generally not good for a rider's health. Most crashes occur at slower speeds because the bike has less balance at slow speeds and frankly, it requires more technique for a rider to handle a motorcycle at slow speeds. Now, I don't know about you, but I see a whole lot of riders out on the street with pretty poor technique. So there are all kinds of mistakes that we can make at slow speeds that cause drops or crashes or even though they result in a less severe injuries or threat to the injuries to the rider, they're embarrassing nonetheless, and it would be better to avoid them all in the first place. So this week on MZ Rider, I thought we'd talk about one thing that causes slow speed crashes, and that's coming to a stop and having the motorcycle out of balance. And I'll give you three techniques to help you fix that. So where should you be looking when you come to a stop on a motorcycle? In order to have maximum balance, when you come to a stop, your head and eyes should be up. You should be looking up the road or through that car in front of you, keeping those head and eyes up, looking out on the horizon. Now, many riders, when they come to a stop, their eyes drift down, or even worse, their head goes down, and they're looking at things like the speedometer, or maybe they're looking to see what gear they're in up on the dashboard. You know, many riders are looking down at the road to see what the road surface is like or at their front tire for some reason. But we can gain so much balance by simply correcting this one bad habit. So here's a simple experiment that I want you to try. Then it's going to show you the effect of looking down and what effect that has on your balance. So stand up, look straight down at your feet and walk about 20 steps trying to walk in a straight line as you possibly can. And then once you walk 20 steps, I want you to turn around, look up, look across the room and walk those same 20 steps and you'll notice how much more balance you feel and you'll improve your ability to walk in a straighter line. So by looking down, that's the same disadvantage we put ourselves in when we're looking down at the road or the front tire or the instrumentation or anything else lower than the horizon when we stop on a motorcycle. So keep those head and eyes up. Looking out on the horizon is going to give you a whole lot more balance. So here's a technique that will help you stop a motorcycle in more balance for a whole lot of reasons. When we initiate the brakes to stop on a motorcycle, we should always begin by smoothly applying that front and rear brake. So you want to apply both brakes. Using both brakes is going to give you the most stopping power, and it also develops muscle memory so that when you have to stop in a hurry, our reaction is always going to be to go to the front and the rear brakes. If you stop frequently with only one of your brakes, either the front or the rear, you're likely to do that same thing in an emergency when you need both brakes in order to maximize braking and to avoid a crash. But here's the key. At the end of a normal stop, like at a stoplight, there's something that we can do that will have a huge impact on the balance of the motorcycle when we complete the stop. So we initiate braking front and rear brakes, but for the last five miles per hour, you know, maybe 10 miles per hour, five to 10 miles per hour or so, you wanna smoothly release that front brake and complete the stop just using the rear brake. So this one technique will have a huge difference on the balance that the motorcycle is in when you come to your stop because it takes some of the weight off of the front of the motorcycle, which causes the the forks to compress and a rebound at the end of the stop. Just by using the rear brake for that last five to 10 miles per hour, the motorcycle's gonna be a lot more balanced. It lightens that front end up so it's not as susceptible to the inconsistencies in the road surface. So if the road is you know, leaning a little bit sideways or there's a crack that can kind of catch the front tire, the less weight you've got on the front tire, the less it's gonna be susceptible to those inconsistencies in the road. So using this technique, you'll use the rear brake all the way through the stop that lasts five to 10 miles per hour. Your left foot goes down first. And then after you get the motorcycle to a full stop, it's kind of personal preference on whether you keep that right foot up on the rear brake or you put both feet down for better balance. You know, I'd say it's a matter of preference I typically, if I'm on a lighter motorcycle with very little wind, I'll keep my right foot up on the rear brake, you know, 90% of the time, depending on the motorcycle I'm on. But if it's on a windy day or if I'm on a heavy motorcycle like my Challenger, especially if I've got somebody on the back with me, 
I'm more likely to put both feet down for better balance because, you know, the person behind you may shift in the, their seat and you want better balance and control of the motorcycle and you'll have that with both feet down. But don't put that right foot down until you've completed the stop using the rear brake. The heavier the bike you're on, the bigger difference you'll see in how balanced the motorcycle feels coming to a stop. But I feel a huge difference on my two lighter motorcycles as well, but especially on the Indian Challenger. It really does make a big difference, and I encourage you to get out and try it next time you come to a stop at a stoplight or just practice it on the parking lot until you get used to it. It'll make a huge difference in the balance of the motorcycle when you come to a stop. So this last tip is partially related to the previous one we just talked about, and that's keeping the handlebars straight or square when you come to a stop, you don't want any turn in those handlebars at all because if there's even a slight amount of turn in the handlebars, that's gonna cause the motorcycle to wanna to fall over in the direction of that turn when the forks rebound on the motorcycle. This can be caused by the road surface. You know, if the road surface has a crack in it, it can kind of catch the front tire and make it want to turn or by slightly turning the handlebars ourselves. you know, just by not having our upper body square, sometimes we'll put a little pr more pressure on one side over the other. It's related to that previous tip because if you complete the stop only using the front brake, then you're, you know, you're sticking both feet out to the side and you're putting all the weight on that front tire as the forks compress and then that tire is really affected by the road surface, causing more potential for the handlebars to slightly be turned when you come to a stop Plus you've got more rebound, so all of that has an effect on, you know, just a little bit of turn in the handlebars is gonna have more effect on the motorcycle wanting to fall over to one side or the other when you come to a stop. Plus in my opinion, sticking your feet out to the sides of the motorcycles like some albatross coming in for a landing just looks bad in my opinion. And if the front tire gets out of alignment just a little bit, you may even come in for a landing that looks something more like this. So to recap, when coming to a stop for maximum balance, here are the techniques. Head and eyes up, looking at the horizon, looking down the road. You initiate braking with both brakes and complete the stop using the rear brake. Keep your foot on the rear brake all the way through the stop, putting your left foot down first and keep those handlebars square at the stop. Remember, no albatross stops. If you apply these three techniques, you'll ride and stop in much more balance and control of your motorcycle at stop signs. Till next week, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.